far beyond that, far beyond that, into eternities of eternities when we made that one decision to re receive Christ as our personal Savior. That brought us into the family of God with all the blessings that God has designed to bless us, not only in this life, but in the life to come. In ages to come, God's goodness is not only to bless us now, but throughout eternities of eternities. Let's read that. But when the proper time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born subject to the regulations of the law, so why did Christ come? Why do we celebrate Christmas? And I think it's so important that every father and mother sit down and talk with their children and let them know why we celebrate Christmas. Nowhere in the Bible that I see that we are commanded to do it, but then how many in here enjoys when we celebrate your birthday? Let's see your hands. Everybody enjoys uh-huh. All right. Well, you know, we enjoy people and, and singing happy birthday to us. Well, it's Jesus' birthday when he came to this earth. But notice he came in the fullness of time, at the proper time. God's timing, not yours, not mine, but God's timing. He sent his only begotten son. Now let's read on a little bit further. Next verse. To purchase the freedom to ransom, to redeem, to atone for those who were subject to the law, that we might be adopted and have sonship conferred upon us and be recognized as God's sons. Now let's just leave that on the board and make sure that we understand that. Let's just don't let that script. Why, did you, why was Jesus born? Hmm? All right. To purchase freedom. For who? For you and for me and for the Jewish people that was under the law. He purchased the freedom and to ransom and to redeem us. Bought us back to atone for, for those who were subject to the law, that we might be, be adopted. Everybody say, I'm adopted, I'm adopted. into the family of God. Now, even in the natural, when you adopt a child into your family, everything you have now belongs to them. They get a full share of the inheritance. If you have three children before you adopted that one, when you adopt that one, that one that's been adopted into your family will get the full share of their inheritance as the other three kids that belong to you. So... We get the same inheritance that Jesus gets. Yes. We are heirs of God and co-heirs with Jesus Christ. So it's much more than just having your sins forgiven. Yeah. Okay? Now that's very important to understand that why Jesus came. And you know, from one generation after the next generation... If the previous generation doesn't share with the next generation certain things, that next generation will not know certain things. Do we understand that? And so we're living in a world today that most children think Christmas is a Christmas tree. Gifts are under the tree for them. And, and, and I'm not kicking that. Like I said, my name is Jimmy, and I'll take all you give me. But folks, we know it's more than that. We're dealing with eternity. We're dealing with God who has changed our nature and given us his nature. And we have been adopted into his family. That means God is our heavenly father. And I ask you a question. Is God somebody up there with a big club ready to hit you over the head the minute you make a mistake? Or is he your really heavenly father? And you know that he loves you very much and he's concerned everything about you. And when you study the scriptures of God and the word of God, 
You'll find that out. In fact, he loved us while we were yet sinners. I'm so glad my earthly father loved me while I was a bad boy. Of course, I knew there was no other bad boys in here, but I'm speaking for myself. You were just a little angel. <laughs> With your wings clipped. <laughs> no, we all come from the same stump. Adam stump. <laughs> but how many of you know that we've been taken out of Adam and we've been placed into Christ Jesus? Everybody say, I've been placed into Christ Jesus. You have to understand that we have a new identification now. We were once sinners, but now we are saints. We were one once wicked, but now we are righteous, and we've been given his righteousness. See, you must calculate that in your mind, that your spirit will get it. And when your spirit gets it, church will not be born anymore. In fact, you'll have to tell your feet, stop moving. And all you want to do is just get up, and you're scared people are going to look at you. And your feet just starts moving like that. And that frown you have on your face, look at this. See this frown? <laughs> but when the Holy Ghost sets your feet a dancing, your heart just jumps right into it. All the cares, what am I to fear? If God be for me and if God be my Heavenly Father, what do I have to fear? The fear of man is the snare of the soul. When I see people that are fearful, I, I love them. But I've been there. But I tell you what, when you really trace, uh, change that fear and realize what God has done for us, that we belong to him. The little boy, it was a poor little boy, didn't have much. This rich little boy was saying, hey, you see that boat over there in the river over there? He says, yeah. He says, my father owns that yacht. And the poor little boy said, oh, is that right? Well, my father owns the lake. <laughs> well, the rich guy said, well, I can top that. You see that big mansion on that hill, that big mountain over there? Yeah. My father, that's my father's house. And the little poor boy said, you see that mountain? That's my father's mountain. <laughs> Listen, our God is a good God. And when you read Romans chapter uh, 2, verse 4, don't you know that the goodness of God has brought you to repentance? My wife, we know, when I first started out, we won't go too deeply into that, but her goodness... God used her and her goodness to bring me to repentance. Because I used to, you know, drink and smoke and curse. And, of course, none of y'all did that. I realize that. But I don't want to shock you, but I was there, lived in the world 26 years before I was saved. So I know everything goes on at the donkey honky. And the hon <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, honky donkey. And I was a honky tonky donk. Oh, the devil will set your feet to dancing. <laughs> but you see, when God does that work in your heart and gives you his nature and deals with that Satan nature, you don't go around shooting people anymore. I see the uh, news people are wondering, why are they doing that? What's wrong with them people? Don't you read your Bible? It says that they have the nature of Satan. That's why they do that. Satan has come to kill, to steal, to destroy. It's no mystery to me. Hello, church. Are you out there? Read your Bible. First John chapter 3, verse 8, 9, and 10. He marked that down. Read that. They have the children, they have the nature of their father, the devil. Some of you not even familiar with that scripture. You better mark it down and read it when you get time. Then you'll know I'm preaching gospel. Well, Christ came. 
to save them. And they're only doing what they see their father do. Did you hear what I just said? Why are they shooting people? Why are they killing people? They only do what their father tells them to do. See, we do what our father tells us to do. We love people. We forgive people. We bless people. That's what the children of God does. But the children of the devil kills people. Declares war, steals, murder, rob. See, it's, 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 it's not no real mystery. How many of you understand what I'm saying? Let me see if I'm talking to the right people out there. Say, so you've got to know the word of God, why people do certain things. But aren't you glad that Jesus Christ, now look at that, he came to redeem those people that are shooting people. He came to redeem us. Well, Bob, I've never shot anybody. Ooh, you want me to show you scriptures on that? Hmm? If you don't love your brother... You're the same as a murderer. Isn't this good preaching? But aren't you glad that you accepted God's salvation? Aren't you glad that he intervened in your life and chose you before the foundation of the world to be his child? Now, we are the children of God. We've been adopted into the family of God. I've got 20 more minutes Hmm. Look at that last part. We've been adopted and have sonship conferred upon us and be recognized as God's sons. Who can I pick on? I want to introduce to y'all God's son. He's been adopted into the family of God. And his big, and his big brother. <laughs> his big brother is Jesus, and your big brother is Jesus too. Is that scripture? You know, call me down if I don't preach the word of God, because you're going to have a hard time calling me down, because that's all I'm going to preach. That's all I know. So he's. He is, he is a son of God. I am a son of God. So therefore, he's my brother. <laughs> and I only say good things about my brother. And I hope that's all he says about me. All right, you may be seated. I heard your wife say, and I believe that. I've never heard him say anything ugly about anybody at all. Now, I think you said I was ugly one time, but I didn't pay no attention to that. Now, you're not going nowhere if you don't believe what God says. You are God's son, adopted into his family. That means that everything that belongs to God belongs to you. Now, I know that is not religious preaching, but that's Holy Ghost gospel preaching. That's what, you got it right on that board. That's why I got that board up there that you might think I'm not just talking over my head that you might see with your own eyes. Recognize. Everybody say recognize. Recognize each other as God's children. Recognize each other as brothers and sisters. My wife is my wife, but she's my sister too. In Christ. In Christ. And I want you to say, I want to say something. God has no perspective of persons. He doesn't love one more than the other. Now, God may, may, God may be able to use another person more than me because maybe that person is more willing to sacrifice and obey God. You understand that? If you have three or four children, you'll understand that some of your kids, you know, will wash the dishes. And some of them will break the dishes. So we all have different gifts. 
I always pray for the people that have 10 gifts. They are worked to death. You better thank God you only have one. But just be faithful to that which is little, and God will make you faithful to that which is much. Very simple, not complicated. Now let's follow the next verse, verse 6. And because you really are his sons. Everybody say, I am really, I am really a, son a son of God. You only get what you go to speak. I speak what I believe. Some of you are sitting out there with your eyes shut and your mouth closed. You ain't going to go nowhere. The devil's going to take you and rip you to pieces. You better know who you are in Christ. And when he comes, you better be just like your big brother. Overcome him by the word of God. It is written. It is written. The other day I had such a horrible attack in my mind. I was laying down thinking about the sermon this morning, the things of God. The devil just came in there and put all kind of trash in my brain. But I knew exactly what to do. What's new? That's just part of the program. I'm a child of God. Who, 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 who come against Jesus? The devil. Who comes against God's sons and daughters? The devil does. So if you're being troubled by the devil, that shows you're really a child of God. Because he don't mess with the lost folks. They're already his kids. Do you understand that? But when you become a child of God, then the devil's going to try to stop you from doing God's will. And he's going to put all kinds of thoughts in your mind. You're, you're no good. You, you, who do you think you are? You, you just this and you that. No, I'm not. Recognize that you're a son of God. Everybody say, I'm a son of God. I'm a son of God. And look at that. Because you really are his sons, God has sent the Holy Spirit of his son, Abba, uh, into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father, Father. I remember when uh, I first became a Christian, and it was Jesus and me, and I uh, didn't know much about the Holy Spirit. And, and then God began to show me in the scriptures about Christ's spirit lives in my spirit, in the person of the Holy Spirit. And I began to uh, walk in the spirit and get uh, uh, and be conscious of the Holy Spirit living in my life and uh, how to be guided by him and directed by him, how to get into the scriptures. And God would reveal the word of God to me by his spirit, not by my own intellectual uh, thinking but God would show it to my spirit and then it would go up into my brain and then my brain could understand what my spirit was seeing in the spirit hello are you out there yes, let me tell you something you either is or you ain't I want to know I love everybody in this church but if you go through all week long not fellowshipping with God, something is wrong. May I love you to tell you something is wrong. See, that on the board means nothing to a lost person. But when you're saved, the Holy Spirit bears witness and something rises up in you and you just want to say hallelujah to the Lamb of God. And people will look at you and say, what's wrong with you? Because if you got it, you know you got it. See, there's an inward knowing, an inward knowing that is that we are partakers of. When the Holy Spirit puts that into the into your bosom, you know that you know that you're a child of God. You know that all your sins are forgiven. You know that God is your heavenly Father. You know greater is He that is in you than He that is in the world. You know by revelation, knowledge that God has saved you. Christ came to this earth to not condemn you but to save you verse 7 then we're going to go to another verse that's going to make your socks come off therefore you are no longer a slave you are no longer a child of devil you could put that in there I'm not adding to the body but all of that is in there Bond servant, a bond servant. You know what a bond servant is? We serve the Lord because we love him. Not to pay some debt. If you understand how the Jews all did it, and uh, they had to work seven years to pay off their debt to somebody they owed money to. And after that, they could continue working for that particular person as a bond servant. Just because the, that, 
that uh, employer, employee, employer was good to them and I want to stay and work for you, then they become a bond servant. Then they get a little uh, uh, in your ear that you're a bond servant. I serve God not because he makes me serve God. I love God because I'm his child. I love God because of me, he's my heavenly father. I love God because all that he's done for me. I love him and regardless of what happens, I'm going to serve the Lord. Now, Bob, you just talking on the top of your head. No, I got a record. <laughs> you can backtrack my record. I'm old enough. I've been through the rivers. I've been through the fire. I've been through the flames. I I've been through the persecutions. I've been through it all. But God was with me. My Heavenly Father strengthened me. And I have strength and power because of Him. Not because of me. For the Lord is my strength. And you get older, you better learn that verse real quick. Or you won't get out of bed on Sunday morning. The Lord is my strength. Y'all just got me preaching up here. Behave yourself. <laughs> Therefore, you are no longer a slave, a bond servant, but a son. See, Paul is a statuating. He wants to know you need to recognize and know you're not a slave anymore. You're not a child of the devil anymore. You are a son of the living God. Now, let me tell you something. That'll just be words to you. But when you begin to believe it, when that thing gets deep down in your heart, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. I will speak what I believe. And I believe what the word of the Lord says. I am no more a slave. I am a son of God. Now, notice what he says. But a son. And if a son, it follows that you are an heir by the heir of God through Christ. <laughs> Folks, don't put all your chips down here. We're only, listen, this ain't our home. We are pilgrims passing through this old life down here. I thank God for everything I have over there. But I'm going to leave it all to Susan when I go. <laughs> Bless her heart. Honey, don't cry. <laughs> Look at her. Scratch that. When she passes on, she's going to leave everything, all that makeup for me and everything. I'm going to look real good, I tell you that. <laughs> See, once we recognize and can co comprehend that, you won't go around depressed anymore. Because the devil's keeping you from that revelation of who you are in Christ. See, we're in Christ. Everybody say, we are in Christ. The Bible says, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 30, it's because of him that we are in Christ Jesus. We, because of him that we have our life in Christ Jesus. Listen, let me tell you something. People are not just bored with religion. They're bored with life. Can I be ugly for about two minutes? Then y'all can throw bricks at me. Of course, you love me and you wouldn't do that because I'm your brother, right? <laughs> Good. I got, I'm glad I got that straight. Get your education. Then what? You're still not happy. How come I talk like that? Because I've been around a long time. Well, if I could just get my college, I'd be happy. No, you won't. You won't be happy until you learn who you are in Christ and what the Lord has done in you and going to do through you. When you are able to walk with him 24-7 in the spirit, you will be happy. You will be happy because you know that your sins have been forgiven. You will be happy because you know who you are in Christ. You will be happy because you know that you are not a slave any longer, but you are a son and a daughter of the living God who spoke the world into existence see you must understand that God has a purpose in all of this you see this uh, plaque or thing whatever you call it this thing you do over here family 
God wanted a family. We're all part of that family. Yes, he loves us, but he wants a family. I remember my kids and says me would be on the couch and they'd be wrestling on the floor and I'd get down there with them and do the scrubby dubby with them and they all pile on top of me and I'd pick one up and throw them to Susan, she'd catch them. It wasn't quite like that, but they thought that's the way it was. Kids just love to be wrestled with. What's this young man there? So he, he, he's just a little on the board side. Now, why? Well, watch him come alive. Come up here. Son. Well, watch him come alive. Now, watch his face now. Watch his face. Uh, my grandson is up there like now. I don't bother him no more. Uh, he can turn me upside down. He could be like Eddie over there. Whoop! Turn me upside down. So anyway, he picks me up every once in a while, bounces me on the floor, boing, boing. Is that enough, Grandpa? Oh, it's enough, thank you. <laughs> How many can identify with that? Wrestling with your kids. God just loves you. He loves to wrestle and just see you and just look at you. And he, oh my goodness, I look at my grandchildren and I just, oh, this is awesome. I look at Susan. I look at you guys. God looks at us and he's so happy. He loves you. Now, God sent his son into the world to adopt us into his family where he could leave us a big inheritance. Yeah, you can interpret it that way. St. John chapter 3 Everybody there, be on the board, and I'll have to close in five minutes. Oh, this is so powerful. Of course, we know what 3.16 says. All right. All right, there's 3.16, let's read it. For God so greatly, greatly loved and dearly prized the world, or that's you, that he even gave up his only begotten, unique son, so that whoever believeth in, trust in, cling to, rely on him, shall not perish, come to destruction, be lost, but have eternal, everlasting life. If you're a child of God right now, you will never die. Quiet in here. No, you won't die. Your body will stop breathing, but that ain't you. Oh, I wish you had time to go into the scriptures. Check it out in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1 through 8. Paul talks about that. No. Absent from the body, what? Present with the Lord. What is absent from your body? Your spirit man. That's who you are. We are spirit beings. God is the spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. We worship him in our spirit. So I want you to say, I will never die. I will never die. You speak what you believe. Now that will take care of fear. I wish we had time to get into the scripture. I need to, I'd like to lock the door here and keep you here for at least five hours. <laughs> About after one hour, you... Even I'd be up here. <laughs> All right. That's my heart's desire, that you see what the Lord has done. Amen. All right, now look at verse 17 real quick, and we're going to close. Here we go. Verse 17, John. First, For God did not send the, the Son into the world in order to judge, to reject, to condemn, to pass sentence, on the world or on me and you. But that the world might find salvation and be made safe and sound through Christ. Amen. 
Now, I know many of God's people are plagued with condemnation. That ain't Jesus. God did not send his son into this world to condemn you, to judge you. Now, in the future, there'll be some judging. Yes, in our life, too. But it'll be, we'll be judged according to what we've done in this body, good or bad. But it won't be judged as far as salvation. Because once you receive Christ, he is our salvation. Salvation is not in a set of rules. Salvation is not in some tradition. Salvation is found only in Jesus Christ. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through Jesus Christ. We can be dogmatic in that. Some folks might not want to raise their hands in the church building. That's fine with me. That's what they want to do. And some might want to raise their hands. That's fine. That's wonderful. I know I come from the back, uh, Baptist background, and, and I kept my hands in my pocket. <laughs> Susan held the, 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 the songbook. I remember when I got filled with the Holy Ghost, my hands kept going up. I couldn't understand that. You know, just, you know, you know what, what's this thing like? You know, people think I'm crazy. You know, can imagine you, know, you outside there and you see somebody with their hands in the air. And you think, well, goodness, somebody's sticking them up. We better find out who's got the gun on them. <laughs> you, you just want to reach out and say, I surrender all, all to Jesus. I surrender all. It comes right out of the part of your being, right out of your heart. And you don't care what people think. You don't care if they stink. It don't make no difference. You're in love with Jesus and you say, I tell you, I think one of the greatest things in the world, when I would come home from work, yeah, I used to work, and my kids would run to me with their arms in the air. Boy, I'd scoop them up, and we'd go round and around, and, oh, Mama, Daddy's home. And she'd say, already? <laughs> I just, I just, kid, I just kid. No, Susan... <laughs> I went to, uh, when I was in the Air Force in civil service, I would go to school. They'd send us out to school. I went out for two weeks. And, and, uh, and I come back, you know, and uh, Susan would just stand up and show, show, show what happened when I walked in the door. Be brave. Be strong. For the Lord thy God is with you. <laughs> and I'd grab her like that and the kids would come. I just kid. Oh, I ain't never going to Texas without you again, darling. Oh, then she'd kiss me. <clears throat> we won't do that here. Some of you. Yeah, I actually love my wife. I know that's news to some folks. I actually love my wife. In fact, I'm madly in love with that woman. I love just her. Her walking around the house, I get geese bumps. They turn into goosebumps. And from there on, it's just bumps. <laughs> See, life don't have to be dull. It's wonderful when you have the Spirit of God in control of your life, saints. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. We are adopted into the family of God. My bank account is so loaded with money. Hallelujah is going to last me throughout eternity. So this little bit of TV time down here is nothing but a vapor. Is that scripture? Yeah, that's what James says. A scripture. All right, let's read here and we're going to close. Look at verse 18. Here we go, 18. He who believes in him, who clings to trust and rely on him, that's Jesus, is not judged. He who trusts in him never comes up for judgment. For him there is no rejection, no condemnation. It's hard for me to see that. He 
Let me turn around. He incurs no damnation, but he who does not believe, cleave to, rely on, trust is it, is judged already. He, uh, he has already been convicted and has already received his sentence because he has not believed in and trusted in the name of the only begotten Son of God. He is condemned for refusing to let his trust rest in Christ's name. So when we put our faith in Christ, that takes care of the guilt. The, Christ paid it all. That's why it's the death, the burial, and the resurrection. What Christ has did on that cross. And now we have been adopted into the family of God. And God is your heavenly father. And there may be times when you think, God, where are you? He's right there. He ain't going nowhere. How many times? I mean, it's like I'm falling off the cliff. This is it. But my trust is still in the Lord. I'm leaning 45 degrees over. And all of a sudden, boom, he'll bring you back. I got testimonies upon testimonies of testimonies of what the Lord has done for me and in me. I'm going to leave you with this thought. Learn what the Lord has done for you. Very important. Learn what the Lord is doing in you, and he wants to do in you, that he might do something through you. I love to hear people say, well, you know what I've done, and that's wonderful. But what is the Lord doing in you? That's more wonderful. And he wants to continue to work in his children to bring us into that, that true perfection of holiness that only he can do by his power as we trust in him to do it. And let's pray. Father, we thank you right now that nobody in this place needs to feel rejected. No, Lord, we're all accepted in Christ Jesus. And we thank you for accepting us, Lord. And if there's anybody in here that really has never experienced a new birth, they might have walked the aisle, but they've never been born again by the Spirit of God. May they come up right now, and we can pray with them. Anyone, you know you haven't been born again, but you have said, well, I trust him. I, I've spoken that it with my mouth, but the Holy Spirit didn't confirm it with his spirit. You know. You know if you're right, and you know if you're wrong. This is not to put anything on the, anybody on a hard place, but you, there's some things we need to know. Because you may walk out here, and next week we don't know what's going to happen. They're killing people at, at, uh, at, at wherever they can kill them. Well, I'm ready to go. If you're ready to go, raise your hand. Let me say, I don't mean not right now. I know we're not ready to go right now. Are we <laughs> we want to eat dinner first, don't we? Huh? <laughs> we want to go on a full stomach, right? <laughs> but you know what I'm talking about. You, you know, and if you, if you know that you, you don't feel like it, that's why we're here, to help you, not to hinder you. Amen. Stand to your feet, turn to somebody and say, I'm glad I, I'm a son of God or a daughter of God. Go ahead, tell them. Confirm it.